Let's uh, welcome in our co-hosts on the day. He is the uh, the boss. He gets top billing as a co-host, too. Mike Horn. Man, I love the, uh, the blazer, man. Thank you, sir. Inspired by Mr. Espinosa. I'm not going to get out Christmas by him, so... He may be smarter than me and more articulate, but I'm sure not going to let him out Christmas me. So I brought the jacket. Looks good, bro. Thank you, buddy. It's Appreciate slimming, it. too. <laughs> no, I'm slim, is what you were saying. <laughs> the, the jacket's not slimming. 100%. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what you meant. And uh, he's wearing the Christmas vest. New York Times bestselling <laughs> author John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning. Did you bring your fedora today? I have it out in the car. So, uh, Mr. Chris Chernock at the uh -huh. open house last week that had I not had the mute button down, all of our audience would have actually heard the, uh, other than on the radio side, you did hear it. But otherwise, uh, he brought me a fedora and I kept forgetting to bring it in. So I have finally brought in the fedora and here, here we go. Hold on. I'm going to wear Which you I, begged I, for for four days. I actually didn't this time. Yeah, yeah, no, you, Usually you, I you, beg you, for food, but yeah. I didn't beg for a free fedora. Yeah, no. And you now you look you okay. Italian. Size, so. Last, you you got to do the, the Sinatra tilt. There you go. There you go. Right there. No, no, don't tilt it up. You tilt it down. <laughs> I, could, I can't know. tell. Wait a okay. Second. All right. We, we good? <laughs> eh, it's a little bit too tilted, I think. Yeah, well, okay. Depends uh, on how much attitude you want. You want what to, I think? It's over tilt, under tilt? Well, how Italian do you want to look? Yeah. Well, I'm Sicilian, so I'm even further south okay. of Italy. And as everyone knows who's Sicilian, Italians don't really regard us as Italians. They refer to us as the armpit of Italy. Only once. My people are impressed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our guest in the program is the uh, mayor of the great city of Martinsburg, Mr. Kevin Knowles. Good morning, Knowlesy. Good, hey, good morning. And you know what? Uh, I think you need an extra size on that hat. I think it might be a little tight. A little tight, bit huh? tight on it. Right? And being a Sicilian, you could do whatever yeah. you want. You think? <laughs> whatever you want. You ran with those people as a kid. No, never. <laughs> you knew those people up in up You in avoided them. You stayed away. The <laughs> northeastern corner of Pennsylvania. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought Kevin was Irish and he didn't hang out with Italians. I thought they didn't get along. Well, you're oh, I, I can't say that we didn't get along. Okay. You're Irish and your Italians had to cooperate. Yeah, we, we worked together. <laughs> you know, the Irish, they were here before Italians, so the Irish built, because, the, you know, they didn't get along with the English, uh, so they left Did Ireland. Did anybody get along with the English? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Especially not the French. Uh, so they, they came over and they built all the Catholic churches. And then when the Italians came over, the Irish said, you can't use our Catholic churches. We don't want you in our churches. So we had to build our own Catholic churches. Because the Irish didn't want to hang out with the Italians. But here we are today, Christmas of 23, making peace. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> I didn't know there was Irish churches and Italian churches. Yes, Irish yeah. Catholic and St. Patrick's. And, yeah. I thought Catholic was Catholic. Well, you it, would it, think, it, huh? It is Catholic, Catholic, yeah. but the churches would have, you could tell, yeah. tell by the names of the church, you know, like St. Right. Ignatius or St. Dominic's, St. Tom's. Learn something new every day. Right. St. James. All that stuff, right? But now, the, you're, you're the, talking about the neighborhood, because yeah. my neighborhood, uh, we, we were the small family in the neighborhood, and it was, it was a Irish Catholic, and we had six kids in our family. So there, there was you were kids, the small family? We were the small family. Yeah. And then, you know, you go two blocks over, uh, and, and that would be the the Italian neighborhood. And that's how things were. And, you know, we used to always play ball together against one another, and, and we had some great times. and still do. Yeah, I, I grew up in a very Italian suburb of uh, Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. first Brentwood first uh, over the border. There's a city line. That's what happened when when people moved down to the city in those days. You moved what you thought was like really far away in the 50s, like an outpost, and here it was like the first place across the city line that was moving out to the country. Back, now, back did, in those did, days. did you all grow up in an urban city kind of environment, or were you in the suburbs that happened to be in the city? I, I grew up in the city. Uh, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, at the time, Scranton had about a hundred and. 25,000 people, so it was a it was a good-sized city for growing up in, and um, I still go back. In fact, I go back uh, every Christmas. We have family that come in. We, we gather and, and reminisce, and then around the third day, we get sick of each other and go in different directions. After you fight and everything, all that good stuff. I just sit back and watch these days. <laughs> so the Harry <laughs> Chapin observe. song... Thirty thousand pounds of bananas. Yes, I know. Was that was, was that an actual incident that happened? I don't know about an incident, but it, it, there's an actual place that that they identify as, as that's why the, the song was written. Okay, Long Hill. Yeah, and and it actually was owned by the Abdallahs. That's a good name, yeah. Yeah, so right? They, yeah, they they owned the they were the banana people in the, in, <laughs> in Scranton at the time. Produce. Yeah, produce. When I was a kid, there was this uh, Italian guy that had this uh, cart. You know, and, and that, I guess later moved, it became like a back of a truck, 
And he used to come through the neighborhood all the time, and he would uh, stop, and then he'd open up the back of the gate, and everybody would rush out and buy all the, all the fresh produce from the guy. Hey, the, so the Huck- Italians sell stuff out of the back of the truck? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They still do. I got. But I, <laughs> I, I had a winter coat. This is. I'm not making this up in the least. <laughs> no, not at all. Okay, so I had this winter coat that um, my dad brought home one day, and it said S-C-U-G-E, Scooge, on it. And he said, uh, hey, I got a coat for you. And I said, uh, Thanks. And I tried it on. He goes, does it fit? And I said, yeah. Then I looked down. I see the name Scooge is on the jacket. I said, who's Scooge? He said, what do you care? Does it fit or not? <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, then that's your coat. <laughs> I, I remember the That's a true story. <laughs> of the so, so I went to college. Never everyone called me Scooge for two years. <laughs> what did it stand for? I don't know. <laughs> it's a former it owner. I had fit. <laughs> I didn't ask. He didn't have to look over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> certain questions you don't ask. <laughs> Does it fit? Yeah, I'll yeah. tell you those uh, back in the day with the hucksters, the produce and everything. Yeah. I still, there's times that go by and I hear the, somebody screaming, strawberries, get your strawberries here. And they'd be walking a cart oh, down yeah. the road. Oh, that's cool. Know. Takes you back. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, it does, yeah. So in the summer. I'm getting with, old, I guess. Mm-hmm. So in the summer with the fire hydrants going so you guys could play in the in the water, is that is that a real thing, too, in, in the city? It, it is in the not, city. Not in my, not, you know, my city had neighborhoods and, okay. you know, we had pool. We had no problem. There was a pool in every neighborhood as ah. far as a public public pool. I mean, ah, a public pool. In the, in, the city, in the city of Scranton, there had to be eight to ten public pools at the time that they could go. And they were, they were in different neighborhoods, West Scranton, North Scranton, East Scranton. So that's the plan for Martinsburg, eight to ten were they, pools. It, were they regularly open every summer, or did they break periodically so that you <laughs> No, they were, always open. they were always open. He was not going to play your game. <laughs> you know, he's not, in fact, he's not even looking at you right I now. I know. <laughs> he, he ignored both of us right there. He's, no, uh, well, I know that both pools will be open this year. You want me to give him the Maloik? You want me to give him the evil eye? I'll give you the uh, uh, yeah. oh, Is that the, is that the, the this thing? No, it's the, just this is the evil eye. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> right. You'll see. You'll, That's why my hands see. are under the table. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kev, as we uh, get to close out uh, 2023, the city of Martinsburg, give us the status report. Well, I'll tell you, the last year, the last three years have been fabulous. I mean, uh, we've seen a lot of growth here in the city, we've seen a 49% business growth. We've seen a growth in uh, investment of a, about $125 million investment from outside entities. You know, you, you have your monument that, that's taken over the inner oven mills. And mm-hmm. I think Mike, Mike's had an opportunity to, to uh, travel and go through there, and, and that's going to be coming uh, open here soon. I, they're going to be putting together a... Um, a real a realty team for uh, rentals uh, should start to see some rentals going in there. Hopefully, springtime. I think I think it's wow. even sooner than that. I think they got ninety ready in February. Um, yeah, no kidding. Is what, what they but told I think, me, but the process is going to yeah. be more of springtime. Before, yeah. before they'll get they'll get the group together yeah. with, with the process that they have to go through. Do we know is there a waiting list for these apartments yet? You know what? I don't know. They haven't had a team put together. I would imagine that uh, I have not seen anything on the internet or anything like that or any advertising. So I would imagine that, from my understanding, is that with that um, management team that they put together, they would also take care of the marketing and, and then market the areas that they're they're looking to bring people. To. And that's going to be pretty much the the largest residential growth in Martinsburg for a long for. For the, like the last eight years, that's the largest residential increase. Is uh, that right? Uh, you know what? I, I don't want to say yes. Yeah. But I, I think, because I know from what I hear, there was like 1,800 homes built in, in the city limits. Uh, Within the city yeah, limits? So, oh, fantastic. Yeah, so I mean, there's, and, and we have another project going on over there. 1,800? Um, yeah, 1,800. Wow. Yeah, we've, inc- I mean, our, our, uh, our population is just, teetering on about 20,000 20,000 people now and you know keep in mind if you go to you go to Weirton you go to Wheeling those cities were built for 75,000 people Wheeling was and and their population dropped to like 40,000 and and we're a city that that was built for like 15,000 yeah. and now it's grown to about 20,000 so you know a lot people people have would have like have a lot to say about things happening in Martinsburg but I've been fortunate to travel throughout the state and see a lot of the cities with my involvement in the municipal league, and, and the problems we have here are nothing compared to the problems that, that other cities have. So, Kev, when you look at this from a council or a, or a mayor's perspective, growing the city, obviously you want to grow the, the residents, you want to grow the businesses. 
do you, is that obviously it had a lot of success in, in business coming and, and, and things like that. How do you plan to grow the city? Is it annexing more property is, or is it just using the properties that you have and, and, and uplifting those? Well, in the grand using scheme? and up, uplifting is the, f the first thing. Uh, you know, we've not done any annexing yeah. and uh, the, we have a, we don't have a big uh, footprint as far as city lines. Now there are opportunities that may come about to take a look at doing some minor adjustments just to kind of make uh, make it more cohesive. Cause yeah, it's not like you have a lot of open land. No, yeah. and, you know, we have a couple spots, like an example, I, I live on West Virginia Avenue, Yeah. and across the street from me there's like a, a, not a square, but a rectangle of about eight blocks that is surrounded by city that's, co that's county. Yeah. So what what happens there is those roads aren't taken care of because nobody has ownership of it. The county doesn't have ownership of roads. State does. State doesn't want it because they, they don't, no, nobody ever turned the roads over and the city doesn't maintain uh, roads outside the city. Yeah. And, uh, it's an it orphaned would, road. And it would make, it would make sense to, to, uh, you know, to, to make to, that, a, to, a, make, to bring that in and, 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 you know, bring the citizens that, cause they're, they're getting the services. They're still getting city water. They're using city water sewer so through the county, but they uh, they still are getting services. But you live in that neighborhood, so maybe you're drawn in. Well, it's maybe. it's kind of, you know it's not as easy as yeah. that. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, annexation. You know, you have to get uh, people to sign uh, sign off on it, or you you know you could take it, just annex it. But you, then you need permission from the county. It's a it's a process. It's not and it's not always nice. Uh, it's not nice to just go in and say, "Hey, we're annexing yeah, you," yeah. and you have nothing to say. Gotcha. Uh, it doesn't give the homeowner much, uh, much to. Uh, they they don't like it too much. Yeah. So, Kevin, <clears throat> kind of shifting gears a little bit. Over the course of the last two weeks, it feels like maybe three, there have been a number of pretty. Uh, there have been three at least high-profile shooting incidents in in Martinsburg. No, there has. The, there hasn't. No, there has not. They're outside the city limits. Outside the city limits. Well, there was, oh, one. One was, there was one. One was within the city. Yeah, and I, I can yeah. speak to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yes. The well, the, the greater question is this. Is there, with the growth of, of the area, are we seeing overall increase in crime rates, or are these one-offs, tragic one-offs that just happen to happen together? Well, you know, keep in mind, again, only one of those incidents has happened within the city limits. And what we have here is... Uh, there's a lot of addresses out there, which which I'd like to get changed, that uh, are listed as the city of Martinsburg that are not in the city limits, and and a lot of times when a news any type of news comes across, it it, it identifies it by the address and, it's, and it makes it sound like and the perception is that it's in the city of Martinsburg and it's not. The incident that happened in downtown uh, in downtown was a targeted incident. This was a gentleman that was. I, don't, I shouldn't say, gentlemen. There's a guy from Washington State that he and his girlfriend or wife uh, split up out there. She moved out here. He came here and sought her out. That is an isolated incident, and that could happen in any neighborhood anywhere in the United States. And, and uh, unfortunately, this is the time of year that those domestic-type incidences happen more often. That's a national trend. So uh, to me, it's it's a tragedy uh, that that individual uh, ended up taking his own life. Uh, the uh, other, the other incidences, uh, w we were on alert from that shooting from uh, Spring Mills, and we were able, our officers were able to identify and pull over the that that person who, who committed that crime, and we were able to take that person without incident, who was who we believe was out to seek somebody else here locally. So. Those are isolated incidences, and it's a shame. And, and what it does, it, 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 you know, when they hear Martinsburg, people just want to go right to the negative. And there's a lot of positive things going on here in the city of Martinsburg. And, and no matter what, you're going to have those incidences happen, whether it's here in the city of Martinsburg, whether it's in Wheeling, Morgantown, wherever it might be, those incidents happen everywhere uh, based on the, the, the uh, uh, those domestic-type situations. But, but is it part of... When we see an area growing as rapidly as Berkeley County and, and by extension Martinsburg, there's always a concern with growth comes additional stress to the resources that are available. So I guess my, the question I'm asking is, overall, are crime rates, whether it's murders or, you know, or just 
violent crime or property crime or whatever, is that on a rise in in this area or is is it kind of a stable uh, stabilized number and and these are concerning one offs? Well, um, one these are one offs to me. Two, any growth brings more people and it's going to bring some bad characters along with it. So, uh, yeah, you will see what, a difference in, in what the crime rate might have been 15, 20 years ago versus what it is today. And it's and, and, and a correlation would be, yes, the population. But we could go back to, you know, the crime rates were, were very, very high when we went through this opioid epidemic. And there was really nothing, no services here in the county or in the area to, to take care of that stuff. And we've been able to... Uh, bring those services together, bring people together to, to make that. So we we're not identified as that that uh, little Baltimore anywhere. We're that, you know we're identified as a nice place to go, city of Martinsburg, downtown and the surrounding areas. As a direct result of everything that we've done over the last five to eight years, uh, on the city level, county level, on the state level. Mayor Kevin Knowles, our guest here on the program, got a question from the boss's wife, and it deals with a parking garage in the city of Martinsburg. Kevin, any well, thank progress? Thank you, Kresha. <laughs> thank you, Kresha. You know what? Remind me to give you a call when I get done, and we'll have a little conversation. Uh, I, well, in, here, listen. In yes. 2008, when I uh, first ran and I had lost in 2008, my platform was for a, a parking garage. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I, I truly believe in, to this day, I truly believe that a parking garage is needed in the city of Martinsburg. It was needed. It's been needed a long time with the growth that we're seeing, plus for anything in the future. So uh, is that something that's always being talked about? Yes. Is it something that's on the books at this moment? No. How much? Yeah. Uh, cost. Well, it's, the, the cost is, uh, it, it's very hard to get your, your return on the investment. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we, are, we are currently working with different uh, thoughts and ideas of what we could do. One of them was, and if you if you noticed, and and, and I know I'm, I know I'm going to get some dings about this, is that we used to be able to pay a nickel or a dime for the meters, and and we got away from that because we needed to have a structured parking so that we can have some kind of idea of what the the cost would be to come back to the to the city to be able to pay for that. So I truly believe that. Uh, for a parking garage to happen in the city of Mars, it's going to be a, it's going to be a collaboration. Whether that collaboration is public private or public private and other government entities, I, I think I think in the near future, uh, you, that you're going to see that that talked about more and possibly some uh, some thoughts moving forward. In a perfect world, where would you put it? A perfect world? Um, you know what? There's several thoughts and ideas about that. Uh, you know, of course, you would have to purchase some land for that. The right. city doesn't own any land. What, whether the county wants to be involved or economic development wants to be involved. But, you know, there's some. there was some thoughts to do something on, on King Street there and, uh, and then some thoughts down t towards uh, the roundhouse in that area. And I, I'll say this. I think the city has done a good job with the parking that they have they have a couple of lots mm -hmm. they, there's a, there's a number of lots uh, i don't find parking that hard downtown at all you know i can parallel mm -hmm. park so uh, i'm not saying my wife can't but um you know it, it's one <laughs> of those Chris, things have that talk too. <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's it, you know you're you're right if you're if you're always going downtown yeah. It's 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 the people that come in for the events the people that aren't there on when, a daily basis that don't know where all the, there is quite enough there's a lot of parking lots within the city i mean i throw a big event every year in, in april of next year we'll be having the, the third annual home show and that brings about five thousand people and every one of those parking lots because we identify them for people are full and and that's you know you have and i think you got to give know. credit to uh, main street mornsburg and the city for, for, with the, for the events that they are doing are bringing way more people yeah. than they used to so it, it does become a, a parking issue when you're bringing 15,000 people in for a, a food truck yeah. fest or something. Kevin, you mentioned business was up in the city. Are you going by business licenses uh, applied for or by revenue collected in the B&O? Business, business licenses. So the sheer number I of businesses. Go, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't go by B&O because it's not in all of it's not in yet. So mm -hmm. Nice I, try them. Yeah. Oh, well, hey, that wasn't a shot on the B&O tax. That was an honest question. <laughs> you, know, you know I wouldn't take shots at you, man. <laughs> I would. <laughs> that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not Mike Height. I'm not here to argue being on tax with you. You know what? That, that, that stuff there has been talked about enough. People know where, where I stand, the city stands, and, and I, it's not something that we want to keep beating up. We can beat it up. You went there, not me, man. I was just asking you how you were measuring business growth. 
I measure it by the licenses. All right. So g give me a percentage of increase that you've seen. Any idea? I believe Bob, I, I, I believe I said 49% over the last couple of years. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right, that's pretty cool. Any, yeah. any idea in terms of variety of business that you're seeing in well, the post-pandemic? I think that's the key word. It's a variety, you know. You know, we're seeing a... a you know, we, we've seen a growth in the Airbnb business. You know, we've seen some uh, restaurants open up, some boutique places open up. So it's a, it's a variety. I mean, the National Food is going under contract, uh, I believe, January 2nd. So we're going to start seeing that, that, that to get developed over on that end of town. What's that going to be? Uh, it's the, uh, they're going to be making collagen uh, bandages. Uh, and uh, that's going to open up... Uh, that, that if you haven't wa driven out there, you could now you can see that whole area. Well, that that building's been abandoned for a long time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I so, mean, I, I, how many jobs is that expected to bring, Kevin? I believe they said thirty to thirty to forty jobs, you know, and uh, professional jobs, and 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 the the plan also is to possibly do some type of a university there too, uh, for that type of work and stuff. So. Personnel wise, uh, any retirements coming up after the end of the uh, calendar year here? Uh, none. None on the horizon that I know of, uh, you know, personnel-wise, you know, we're still uh, very down as far as uh, personnel for the police department. You mm -hmm. know, we're down 13 police officers, which puts a, a lot of uh, taxing uh, emotions on, on that force, but they're doing a great job. They're doing 12-hour shifts, and, and we've seen a huge, uh, a huge uptick in, in the recruitment atmosphere. I think we have eight eight ready to come on but it it takes but but from the start of the process to get them on i mean it, it could take us a year to get back to maybe 45 or to to 50. any uh, new companies moving in in 24 that you're working on i know you couldn't identify them if you had them but uh, are, are things in the works you know uh well, yeah there's there's companies that we've been working with that will continue to work with that will open up in 24 yeah you're about to ask, Mr. Hornby. Yeah, was there any movement on the Lake Thomas idea, yeah. or uh, is is that? I know you can't really give us massive details, but what's? Well, I can. What, I, yeah, I, okay. I, can I can give you a lot of detail because we've you know we've we've had uh, you know studies done and, okay. and drawings done up, uh, and you know here in January we will be doing a presentation, a public presentation as to what Lake Thomas is going to be looking like and. Uh, and will that be a, a city of Martinsburg project, or is it a private-public partnership? That's city, that's city of Martinsburg. Fantastic. Uh, at this point, uh, uh, it is something that I know that there's a lot of us that uh, city council and, and myself and administration that that's been a jewel in the middle that nobody's really capitalized on. We have a huge project going to to uh, re-outfit our department of public works with some new buildings down there next to it, and then behind it there's. There's going to be the, the trails and the paths going through that's going to connect to our Frog Hollow. The Frog Hollow is going to eventually connect to Route 9. So over the next year or two, you're going to see uh, an opportunity to walk or bike from Lake Thomas to Charlestown. Fantastic. Uh, so, and that Frog Hollow, is that currently in the works? Or is it Frog Hollow is open. It's open. Frog Hollow is open. It's not connected yet. It's it's open. You could get on it there by Wilson, Wilson and Queen Street, and then it'll take you all the way down to Burke Street. But before the get, underpass eventually get to war memorial park is that yeah the, eventually the plan? event the plan is to take it uh, underneath the bridge and then you see the sidewalk to nowhere yeah when you're going to that's going to take a trail down there'll be a crossing across the the creek and then from there over to what we call our creekside plan our creekside plan is where uh the uh the old mill is and yeah. where uh, Orsini's Antiques there'll be a path going through there we have a huge public and private and, and partnership plan there also that's currently in the works Kevin oh yeah it's it's, it's the, yeah it's moving along the the uh, I believe all the engineering and all of the documents and and all of the uh, drawings and concept is if not finished they're very near to be finished that we're gonna uh, we're gonna have to make some decisions on one how's it gonna get paid for and yeah. two uh, and is, is it being fully paid for by the city of Martinsburg or is it a partnership with the state the county and well the city? Uh, of course we're always looking for for partnerships okay uh, I, I don't I, I don't expect the county to be involved in it at all okay yeah. all right question from the audience uh, who programs the traffic lights well, if they're, if they're King and Queen Street, then that's DPW. That's not. Yep. Yep. That's that's a that's a state highway. You ever you ever request? Uh, 
Well, let me just say this. Rather than reading specific requests, where would people file their suggestions for how traffic lights should operate in the city? I would, I would say DOH, uh, Department of Highways. And I'd say... Get, and I, well, you know what? I, I would say contact your delegates. And that's, and the that's exactly that. what I'd say, it, especially for traffic lights. Yeah. Um, we've had some significant um, gains in... in talking to DOH and said, hey, we, we'd like to have this traffic light looked at more and changed. And they've been very, very receptive to that. Yeah, so. and, and I, I think that's a, a lot of times people... King and uh, Raleigh is the first suggestion. That I'm yeah, well, King, King and Raleigh yeah. is, a, is a state road. And, um, you know, we, we, we can put our, our requests in. I think a lot of times there's a misconception on who do you call mm -hmm. uh, because it's in the city, it, it's a state thing. So that's really something that... We can help with, but uh, you know, if you want to get some more bang for your buck, then you want to call your delegates and your state senators to that represent that area to to get and on. And by the, the way, that's Hornby, no S. It's <laughs> Bruce Hornsby in the range. Well, Mike hey, Hornby. I don't, delegate. I, I don't know who asked that, but I think King and Rally is actually way better than it used to be. So uh, yeah, the uh, complaint they, is they, it needs to be more of a delay so you can turn left. So you can turn left. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? I I travel that all the time, and I I get that. Or or maybe a left signal. Yeah, a left arrow would be, yeah, ideal. Yeah, be yeah. ideal. Or a roundabout. Well, that <laughs> oh, won't happen with the garage. There. You got the garage there now. Yeah, yeah. is there going to be a roundabout in the city? There, uh, there yeah, was well, discussion you, about that yesterday. I, I believe. Um, I think we got a couple. Tavern Road, isn't that? Tavern part Road of, is part one. Tavern part Road. Of that's in Eagle there. School Road's going to have a roundabout there. At the when, when is that? I don't. Is he? Well, the city is not building yeah. any roundabouts. Right, they know. The city is not building it. It's, you know, they'll. I think they're making the developers put a couple in. Um, I know I talked to Justin Henry about uh, from Pan Homes Homes about the one that's going in down the road here, yeah. um, Route 11. Um, I know Tavern Road is definitely in the works. Um, and, and let me just state for roundabout purposes, if you've never dealt with them, the person in the roundabout has the right of way, not the person entering the roundabout. Yep. If you're in the roundabout, you're the king. If you're outside the roundabout, just you get away. Just give way to the left. I mean, the, you just... It's. Very I love. Simple. I love them. I do too. Great. I, much no, better I think than they are too. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, I it, when I traveled as a kid, they always had them in, in New Jersey, and I, we used to. My father, like, I'd hear my father complain about the roundabouts, and we used to think it was great because we keep missing the turn to get off. <laughs> <laughs> like in Chevy Chase's European Vacation. Yeah, there you go. Right? Uh, and uh, with the uh, Harpers Ferry reopening on 340, you can actually drive through Shepherdstown now and not have to bring a lunch while you wait at the yeah. stop sign there. It's gotten a lot better. Hey, uh, Kev, you're going to hang out for a little bit? Sure. All right, Delegate John Hardy joins the uh, fray coming up after the break here. And uh, Mr. Gilstrap, you've been quiet for a while over there. I'm, I'm just enjoying the show. Since Noel threatened you. Yeah, well, yeah. It was I, a subtle I got that, yeah. It was, there it was, was a sidearm <laughs> pointed yeah, at Yeah, look, he's, he's showing me. He's, he's pulling the jacket away. 